Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. On October 24th, 2023, a crowd gathered in an event hall in Hawaii. They were at a conference for the chip design firm Qualcomm. Rumors were churning that something big was coming. The crowd was chattering among themselves in anticipation. But within a few minutes, everyone in that audience would be stunned. No, what? Did he just say that their chips were faster than the chips from Apple and Intel? And it uses less power? How could this be possible? The speaker, Cristiano Amon, Qualcomm president and CEO, could read the stunned faces of the audience, and he stated in his thick Brazilian accent, yes, take a photo, take a photo. Our Ryan CPU exceeds the M2 Max. In It's faster than any leading ARM compatible competitor in a single threaded CPU performance. Take a photo, take a photo. This was the biggest single event in the tech hardware space since Apple began to design their own custom chips for their MacBooks back in 2020. But as the ultimate twist in this story, the people who designed this new magical Qualcomm chip were in fact ex-Apple engineers, and they took all their trade secrets with them. In all of this, there's a lawsuit going on, but it's not from who you'd expect. After Qualcomm's bombshell announcement, it's now come to light that Microsoft, Lenovo, HP, Dell, Asus, and Samsung are all going to use Qualcomm's new chip to power some of their laptops. But it wasn't over. In a matter of days, Apple hit back with a surprising unveiling of a new chip. But the thing is, according to early benchmarks, Apple's M3 is still beaten by Qualcomm in some cases. And don't worry, we'll check that out too. Overnight, the computing industry has just gotten very interesting. We're going to get into all of this in this episode. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. A bit of background. For all of modern computing history, computer microprocessors have generally fallen into two categories x86 chips and ARM chips. x86 chips are what you'd usually find in Windows desktops, laptops, and even Macs until 2020. x86 chips are generally complicated, use a lot of power, but they were flexible and performed well. The major players in the x86 space are Intel and AMD. ARM is a British firm that licenses their chip designs for modification by other brands. ARM licensing chip designs will come into play near the end of the episode. ARM chips are what you'd expect to find in phones and tablets. ARM architecture is extremely efficient, simpler in design, but were traditionally weak in performance in comparison to x86. That's the way it was, and the way it always would be. Until things were flipped on their head in 2020 when Apple did the impossible. They essentially scaled up a modified iPhone chip to reach desktop performance. In other words, they designed a mobile ARM chip with x86 desktop performance. I made a video on this and said that this was a change in the computing industry. One year after the success of Apple's M1 chip, Qualcomm decides to buy a fresh startup made up of ex-Apple engineers, but we'll get to that part of the story later. But at the end of the day, the result of this fresh talent from Apple was Qualcomm coming through from nowhere to outperform Apple's M2 chip. We are embarking on this journey, and our goal, when we set ourselves to develop the CTU, is to set the bar for the industry and establish the performance leadership for Windows PC. We have delivered. And I have to tell you, we exceeded our own expectations. So, based on the announcement today, I'm very pleased to tell you that there is a new sheriff in town. The Orion CPU is the new leader on mobile computing, period. It's been designed. It's been designed by Qualcomm from the ground up with one thing in mind. Can we have unprecedented level of performance at extremely low power? It's faster than any leading ARM compatible competitor in a single threaded CPU performance. Take a photo, take a photo. <laughs> I'm sure you want to take the next photo too. Yeah. If you want to match, 
If you want to match that performance, he can do with 30% less power. Isn't that incredible? Okay, but if we say that is the new CPU leader for mobile computing, period, uh, I have to show you more. So, it's faster than leading x86 CPU. Single-threaded CPU performance of the core exceeds the i9-13980HX, which is designed for high-performance gaming device. Okay, get ready for the next photo. That's gonna be good. <laughs> and if you wanna match the performance, it does a 70% less power. The YouTube channel, Gary Explained, goes over some early benchmarks when compared to Apple's M2, which keep in mind is a year old at this point. So what we're seeing here is that the best single 3D performance is from the Snapdragon X Elite. Even when it's running in that 23 watt mode, that's better than the M2 Pro that you get in a MacBook Pro, and even better here when you bump it up to even that higher thermal budget. And of course, multi-core does depend on the number of cores you've got. Uh, and then you've got the M2 Pro. This is, of course, the big one that everyone's in their mind. Now, it is slightly faster than the Snapdragon X Elite when you're running in its 23 watt mode, but not when you bump it up to 80 watts. So it'll be interesting to see what laptops Qualcomm's partners release uh, you know, uh, next year to see what kind of uh, wattage we're going to have. The tech world was stunned. Anantech writes, quote, if nothing else, the introduction of a clean sheet high performance CPU design makes Orion the most interesting story in hardware tech right now and the most interesting thing to happen in the CPU space since the introduction of Apple's M1. And if the Snapdragon X Elite as a whole can deliver on the performance claims CPU, GPU and NPU, that makes things all the more interesting. The fact that we're talking about the Snapdragon X Elite in the same breath as the M2 or Raptor Lake is a major achievement for Qualcomm and the competition is heating up. NVIDIA and AMD have also mentioned plans to get into the ARM-based PC space. But as we all know, things weren't over. The very next week, Apple hits back by announcing their M3 chip. So the question has to be asked. So how does Apple's latest chip compete with the Qualcomm X Elite? Well, we don't have all the data yet. At the time of writing, the X Elite so far has been seen in benchmarks in the wild running two versions a low-power 23-watt version and a high-power 80-watt version. For context, the base M3 uses 25 watts of power and the M3 Max uses 30 watts of power. So take this with a grain of salt because it's not the full picture. But in single-core performance, the 80-watt version is unsurprisingly the fastest because it uses the most power, while the 23-watt version of the X Elite is defeated by all versions of the M3. Multi-core is a different story though. The 80 watt X Elite is beaten by the M3 Max by 19%, but still manages to outpace all other versions. While the 23 watt version of the X Elite sits in between the base M3 and the M3 Pro. So, how did Qualcomm do all of this so suddenly? Well, basically, as you know, they poached the talent from Apple. It all begins with the establishment of the Nivea team in 2019. So what is Nivea, I hear you asking? Well, they're basically a company founded by John Bruno, Manu Galati, and Gerald Williams III. These guys are the who's who of chip design at Apple. They were key, high-level architects behind many generations of Apple's iPhone processors. Williams was the key architect on all of Apple's CPU designs, including the recent Lightning Core in the A13. The three founders combined have over 100 patents related to systems engineering and silicon design. Other accolades of the founding team include engineering leadership roles at Google, Apple, Arm, Broadcom, and AMD. The company aims for an upheaval in the industry, which they describe in their own words as a, quote, step function increase in compute performance and power efficiency. Normally, someone could just say this is all marketing hype, but their stellar track record and what they've just done proves that this is the case. After seeing what Apple did with the M1, they purchased Nivea in January of 2021 for $1.4 billion. After this, they folded the company's technologies into their roadmap for future chips. And the X Elite is their very first product. And I think that's remarkable. 
In my opinion, the purchase of Nivea by Qualcomm will go down as a turning point for the company and perhaps the industry as a whole. As mentioned earlier, Microsoft, Lenovo, HP, Dell, Asus and Samsung are all getting on board and using Qualcomm in some of their upcoming laptops. Now all that has to happen is Microsoft taking Windows on ARM seriously. Once this is done, things could get really exciting. As a side, chip designers leaving Apple to start their own startups reminds me of back in the 1960s when Fairchild Semiconductor engineers moved off throughout Silicon Valley to create startups. One of these companies was Intel. So I have to wonder, is history rhyming? Speaking of Intel, what's going on with them? Well, they're releasing their new generation of laptop chip, but so far, according to what we know, Intel's new laptop processors, dubbed Meteor Lake, offers a slight improvement of what Intel is currently offering and AMD, but they do prioritize power efficiency and all-day battery life. Intel has announced its hotly anticipated 14th gen Core Ultra Meteor Lake based processors will launch on December 14th. The new CPUs offer all the performance of 13th gen Raptor Lake chips with half the power draw. With Meteor Lake, Intel finally joins its competitors with its first CPU that uses independently fabricated chiplets. While some of these tiles will be created using Intel's bleeding edge Intel 4 process, others will use TSMC's five nanometer process. The chips use a new type of efficiency core, which Intel calls a low power island designed to handle light workloads without powering up a more energy hungry compute tile, reportedly doubling integrated graphics performance per watt. Unfortunately for Intel, AMD's next generation processors based on the Zen 5 architecture are just around the corner and they're expected to perform better. Okay, so lastly, what about this lawsuit? Well, according to Bloomberg, the British firm Arm, quote, accused Qualcomm of building on technology it acquired from Nuvia without negotiating a new license. Qualcomm filed a countersuit claiming that it's done nothing unlawful and that Arm can't demand that it destroy processor chip technology built with Nuvia's intellectual property. And so with that, ARM laptops are venturing into the mainstream and Apple will have some great competition on their hands in a year or two. This is ultimately great for consumers and I'll be watching closely from the sidelines. So what do you guys think? Feel free to discuss in the comments section below. Anyway, that's about it from me. If you want to watch my previous episode on how Apple changed the industry back in 2020, I'll leave a link to it below and at the end of the video. So thanks for watching. My name is Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers guys, have a good one.